Good morning, brothers and sisters. We are gathered to celebrate the Eucharist as our thanksgiving to God for the graces we have received, especially for giving us St. Titus Bransma, our intercessor, model for being zealous for truth and freedom and inspiration in our Carmelite life. The presider in our Eucharistic celebration this morning is the very Reverend Father Rico P. Ponce O'Carm, prior provincial of the Order of Carmelites, Philippine Province, together with the Carmelite Fathers. Let us all stand and join the choir in singing that Thanksgiving. Saint Joseph as the patron saint of all 
the workers. So we pray for all the workers all over the world that they may receive such wages and also uh, attain uh, full discipline. So in silence we pray for each worker in the different communal, especially those who are struggling with their families. As we prepare ourselves to celebrate the mystery of Christ's love, let us acknowledge our sins, we implore the forgiveness by which we are immune and saved, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. Together, I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words in what I have done and in what I have failed to do. Through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault, therefore I ask Blessed Mary ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord of our God. May Almighty God of mercy on us, forgive us all our sins, and bring us to our just in life. Amen.
But the second time voice came from heaven and answered, What God has with thee, you are not to call for faith. This happened three times, and then everything was thrown up again into the sky. Just then three men appeared at the house where we were, who had been sent to me from Caesarea. The Spirit told me to accompany them without discriminating. These six brothers also went with me, and he entered the man's house. He related to us how he had seen the angel standing in his house, saying, Send someone to Jobal and summon Simon, who is called Peter, who will speak birds to you, by which you and all your household will be saved. As I began to speak, the Holy Spirit fell upon them, as it had upon us at the beginning. And I remember the word of the Lord, how he had said, John baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. If then God gave them the same gift He gave to us when He came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to lead their God? When they heard this, they stopped objecting and glorified God, saying, God has then granted thy living repentance to the Gentiles too. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. As the mind longs for the running waters, so my soul longs for you, O God. A thirst is my soul for God, the living God. When shall I go and behold the face of God? A thirst is my soul for the living God. Send forth your light and your fidelity, they shall lead me on, and bring me to your holy mountain, to your dwelling place. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Then will I go into the altar of God, the God of my gladness and joy. Then will I give you thanks upon the heart, O God, my God. A thirst is my soul for the living God. Peace all rise for the Holy Gospel. Jesus said, Amen, Amen, I say to you, whoever does not enter a sheepfold through the gate, but climbs over elsewhere is a thief and a robber. 
But whoever enters through the gate is the shepherd of the sheep. The gatekeeper opens it for him, and the sheep hear his voice as he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has driven out all his own, he walks ahead of them, and the sheep follow him because they recognize his voice. But they will not follow a stranger. They will run away from him because they do not recognize the voice of strangers. Although Jesus used this figure of speech, they did not realize what he was trying to tell them. So Jesus said again, Amen, Amen, I say to you, I am the gate for the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers, but the sheep did not listen to them. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And dear friends, the good news for our salvation. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Sabi ng killer, nagpatay po ako ng 
Dette ikke er der, hvor man fører det. Dahil po, Padre, sila ay naniniwala sa Diyos. Ikaw po, Padre, naniniwala sa Diyos. Sabi ng Padre, no, kumun. Ngayon, char-char ng langit. But, We are gathered here today to remember the man who answered the three questions in all yeses. Tedus Transma, as a rector magnificus of the Catholic University of Nijmegen in the Netherlands, lived a decent, secure, tranquil, dignified life, revered by me. With the privileges he enjoyed, one could imagine that he could age gracefully. And when his time is up in life, he would rest in all dignity. Siguro, imagine natin na meron siyang stay burial funeral. Kasi, Rector Magnificus, Professor Doctor, napakalating po ang Lord. But this did not happen. He gambled his life in favor of the Jews who were persecuted by the Nazi. Pontaibus did not know if these Jewish people were grateful to him, citing in solidarity with their struggle. He campaigned with all boldness against the oppression and the cruelty of the Nazi. Kung tinignan mo sa mapa, ang Nijmegen is very close, nasa borders yan ng Germany. So madali lang puntahan ng mga Nazi, German people, ang Nijmegen. Nasa border lang. Pero ang tanong, Professor Doctor, Rector Magnificus, what made him do so? to be in solidarity with the Jews. His love of Jesus in and through his prayer and contemplation. His contemplation made him driven to convince that the schools should not subscribe to the Nazis' propaganda. And the press should not refuse, should refuse to publish The Nazis' lies. Titus, uh, Titus Ransma told us, the Carmelites of today, that prayer and contemplation do not make us insensitive to the plight of the people, especially those who are deprived, oppressed, and exploited. Dahil sa ating pagkadasal, dahil sa ating contemplation, tinuruan tayo ni Titus na hindi tayo magbulag-bulagan at hindi tayo magdingi-dingihan sa nangyari sa lipunan. Sa nangyayari sa lipunan. Gets you there? Yes. Prayer and contemplation make us aware of what is going on around us and attentive of all forms of injustices that smack the beauty of human dignity and of creation. Consequently, however, not only the Titus Ransma lost all the privileges he enjoyed as the Professor Dr. Mani Rector Magnificus, but on the 19th of January 1942, He was arrested by the Gestapo and was locked up in a solitary confinement. His head was shaved, kasi pinakaunod niya yung damdan ng buhok niya, but it was shaved. Stripped of the Rector Magnificus Guard and invested of a striped prisoner's clothing. Name, dangerous man. Kung sa ating kapanahonan ngayon, siya ay isang terorista. 
start on the 26th of July 1942 was killed by lethal injection in Dachau concentration camp. Now, again, what made Titus Brandsman do, uh, do all these things? What made him so unwavering to stand with the Jewish people and endure all the cruelty of the Nazi? The Gospel of John has something to say. It narrates about Jesus who said, as if you continue reading the Gospel that Father Dudu uh, read, it says, I am the Good Shepherd. A Good Shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. A Good Shepherd lays down, unlike the hired man, who is not a shepherd, and whose sheep are not his own, sees a wolf coming and leaves the sheep and runs away. And the wolf catches and scatters them. This is because he works for a pay and has no concern for his sheep. I am the good shepherd, I know mine, and mine know me. Just as the Father knows me, and I know the Father, and I will lay down my life for the sheep. The love of Jesus of his fathers, of his father's people, made Jesus gamble, made Jesus gamble his life in favor of his father's love. Now the question is, is it worth it? Worth that? Na igamble ni Jesus ang kanyang karangyaan sa kapangyarihan ng langit at magpapatao sa gitna ng kahirapan. These people who sometimes, if not often times, are ungrateful. People who don't even care if there is God who sees their unjust deeds. These are people who are sensitive and indifferent to the plight of the poor. Unfortunately, sometimes, if not often times, we are these people. Ungrateful sinners don't even give up once if we are sinning despite the Father seeing us. But for Jesus, it does not matter who these people are and what these people are. Because of his great love of his Father, he loved the people whom his father loved so much, to the extent of laying down his life for them. Now, the question is, in your contemplation, do you love the people that God loves? In your prayer, in your silence and solitude, do you love the poor? Love drives Jesus to lay down his life for God's people. And in this complex process of loving and kenosis, the Son is transformed to become the good father of the sheep, who is ever willing to lay down his life for the sheep. This is the definition now of what is good. This is the definition now of love. This is the definition now of prayer. This is the definition of contemplation. Did you get it? Remember the three questions that I asked you? If you are living a decent in your life, would you gamble by a resilient in favor of the people who do not know you and whom you don't, uh, do not know uh, if they are grateful to you? If you live a tranquil, dignified life, respected by many, would you do things that lose the privilege? As a contemplative, would you leave your time at the feet of the Lord just to be with the people who live a harassed life? 
our Lord Jesus Christ answered this question in all yeses. In the affirmative. As you may have observed, there is an intertwine of what Jesus did and what Titus Bransma have done. He indeed became the alter Christus. Titus Bransma became for the Jews the visible image of the invisible God. This is the invitation for us, Carmelites, and those who believe in God to be the visible image, visible presence of the invisible God. But Titus Ransma was a Dutch national. <clears throat> is it not enough to just have his own Dutch brethren? Why include the Jewish people? <clears throat> the Acts of the Apostles has something to say on this question. It has strong invitation for us believers of Christ in the here and the now. It says in the first reading, when Peter went up to Jerusalem, the circumcised deliverers confronted him by saying, You entered the house of the uncircumcised people and ate with them. How dare you? How dare you eat with these uncircumcised and unclean people? Peter has this to say. If then God gave the Gentiles the same gift, He gave to us when we came to believe in the Lord Jesus Christ, who was I to be able to hinder God? When the discriminating disciples heard this, <coughs> they stopped objecting and glorified God by saying, God has then granted life-giving repentance to the Gentiles too. And so with what Peter said to them, the disciples, the other disciples were converted and transformed. Now, for us Carmelites, from the contemplative Carmelites, we know fully well this maxim. Ang sakit ng kalimbingan ay dama ng buong katawan. The son felt the pain of the father's people. I was felt the pain of the oppressed in Jews in the Netherlands and in Europe. Like Christ, who knew that there is no going backwards from the father's love, that to love the Father is to love until the end. Titus took to himself the gravel of the little injection to die with God's people. And this was the greatest honor God has given Titus to die with his suffering people. While reflecting on this, a story, another story came to my mind. There was a commander of the occupation, a troops, who said to the mayor of a certain village, We know you are hiding a traitor. Unless you give him up to us, we shall harass you and your people by every means in our power. Kung magtago kayo ng traitor, Iharas namin kayo. The village was indeed a hide, oh, was indeed hiding a man who seemed good and innocent and was loved by many. But what could the mayor do now that the welfare of the whole village was at stake? And kagawin? Days of discussions in the village council led to no conclusion. So the mayor finally went to the priest. The priest and the mayor spent the whole night searching the scriptures, buklat ng buklat sa Biblia, until 
they came up with a text that said, it is better that one man die to save the nation. Ito naman ay si Jesus. So the mirror had been offered in no sent man whose screams echoed through the village as he was tortured and put to death. Twenty years later, a prophet came to that village, went right up to the mayor and said, How could you have done this to them? How dare you? That man was sent by God to be the savior of this village and of this country. And you handed him over to be tortured and killed. Sabi ng mayor, but where did I go wrong? The priest and I looked at the scriptures and did what they commanded. Sabi ng prophet, that's where you went wrong. You looked at the scriptures, you should have also looked at into the man's eyes. Kadalasan, Tayo mga nagdadasal at tayo nasa contemplation ko no, don't want to see eye to eye with the people who suffer, with those who are hungry, with those who are persecuted. Baka magdadit rin tayo sa kanilang sitwasyon. My friends, today is Mayo Uno, isn't it? It is. Labor Day. Most of our brother and sister workers are not just living. Not given enough safety precautions in their workplaces. And are not given regular work status. For so long, I don't talk to them. They become sacrificial victims at the altar of profit and money. They are the modern slaves. They are the modern Jewish people of our time. Now, as Carmelites, are our prayers, are our practices of silence and solitude, are our moments of contemplation in any way related to the situation of the poor? May the gospel and the Christ of your celebrated today give you some to answer the question. We are born into eternal life by dying to study. As we rejoice to share with St. Titus Franz Mont the faith that we profess at so high a cost, let us turn our thoughts and prayers to the needs of all people. In every prayer, we say, Lord, graciously hear our prayer. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For the church, corporate witness to Christ and all he stood for, that it may be united in courageously presenting to the world the good news of freedom 
from sin and death. We pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For all who govern us, that they may guide us with justice and compassion, so that the dignity of all may be respected. We pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For all Christians who must suffer for bearing witness to their faith, that they may not yield to hatred, that they may have the courage to continue through the dark tunnel and know that at the end, the eternal light is shining for them. We pray. Our for Carmelites everywhere, may Mary be our example, so that, bearing God within us, our lives may radiate mercy and compassion and bring forth Christ for our world. We pray. Lord, we hear our prayer. For peace in our time, through the intercession of Saint Titus, who found his deepest peace in the Lord, may human hearts, especially those intent on war, be set free from fear, hatred, and violence, enabling the spirit and love of Christ to live in the hearts of all. We pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For the homeless, for migrants, for refugees, for those displaced on account of war or natural disaster, that the hearts of men and women may be moved to reach out to them with compassion and practical help, we pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For our young people, the future of our church and of our world, that the example of St. Titus may inspire them to live of courageous faith, we pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. For those who have died needlessly through violence, and for those who have died recently, and for all our departed loved ones, that they may have life without end, we pray. Lord, graciously hear our prayer. God our Father, as we give thanks for the gift of Saint Titus Ransma, who gave his life for you, grant we pray that his love for you, even unto death, may direct our gaze without wavering towards the light of your glory. We make our prayer to Christ our Lord. Amen.
that are sacrificed to be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Dear Lord, accept the sacrifice of your hands, the great grace and glory of His name, for our good and good of all His holy church. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice of consecration and praise, which we offer to your majesty in commemoration of the blessed of St. Titus Ransma, that it may lead us to obtain pardon and confirm us in a perpetual thanksgiving through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Give up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord, for the blood of your blessed martyr, Saint Titus Ransom, for out thy Christ to glorify your name. Choose for your marvelous works, by which in our weakness you perfect your power, and the people is just trying to bear your witness through Christ our Lord. And so, with the powers of heaven, we worship you constantly on earth, and before your majesty, without end, we again. Thank 
therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the new year of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Do we pray upon the ovation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to your son. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you, so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, Mother of Carmel, Saint Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, Saint Titus Bratsma, and with all the saints, a most constant intercession in your presence, we rely for a failing help. May the sacrifice of our initiation, we pray, o Lord, in advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be peace to confirm in faith and charity. We have built your church on earth with your servant Francis of Hope and Conesto, our bishop. The order of bishops, all the clergy and the entire people you have gained for your own. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family, whom you have summoned before you, in your compassion and merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world, to our departed brothers and sisters, and to all who are pleasing to you, at their passing from this life, give kind and deep hands to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory, through Christ our Lord, to whom you restore the world, all that is good. Through him, with him, and with him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, 
for we bring you them and grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the peace and hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Thank mm-hmm. you. 
Eu sou a mãe. Eu tenho que ser 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 a mãe. Uh, on May 15th, the uh, uh, anniversary itself of the organization, we encourage all communities to have your own uh, celebrations. So, kanya kaya tayo celebrate. So, yung mga dito sa Mito Manila, pagdating siguro mga sama-sama. So, we really thank God for that uh, wonderful day that the Lord has given us. And, uh, I would like to thank no, the side from the National Pilgrimage uh, Relief Team. Uh, we thank uh, in particular our speaker for this morning, Brother Lester expert on titles. Kinagawa natin siya for three months sa Netherlands. Kaya patungkahan niya mismo yung mga lugar. Yung titles, his birthplace, mga communities kung saan siya tumira, saan siya nagtrabaho. Kaya he has the authority to say na ganoon, ganyan. Because patungkahan niya mismo yung mga lugar na yung Lasaga, sa Dako, Dakao, kung saan si Titus may pinakay. No? Thank you, Brother Esther, and congratulations for that. And we also thank Father Noel no? sa so, uh, inspiring and very challenging uh, family para sa atin. At salamat sa mga sa mga mga Hermelectris who was celebrated with me in this uh, Eucharist. Si Father Dodo, si Father Tunes, Si Pablo Joseph sa ating procures of finance. So siya po ang punong nabala together with our co-workers na nag-organize para sa ating pagkain. So sa lahat po mga nagpunod sa ating the liturgy committee, our student friars, the documentation committee, So, sinabi ko ni Father Alvin Kanina, ito ang ating mga activities in the province. They are all very uh, posted in our YouTube uh, channel. So, hopefully you will also follow and subscribe to our YouTube uh, channel. So, thank you very much. Thank you very much for our 1,000 subscribers. Uh, thank you. So, salamat sa mga nagkala ng pagkawal. So, after our holy mass, so, may sunod natin ang ako po. Thank you. So, we must now conclude our holy mass. The Lord be with you. May Almighty God bless you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go announce the gospel of the Lord. And see you So, for the din natin yung nasa online, marami po sila. Thank you all over the world to the
okasyon Parmelita ay tulad din ng isang binhi Na ipinunla sa masaka ng bukirin ng Carmelo Naghahangad na maging isang ganap na puno Pinakamatatag na di kayang wasakin Ang bagyo sa kanyang lilim at bungay masisiyahan kahit sino ang lumago sa Carmelo ay punong puno ng patasa dahil tayo ay nasa malawak at masagana.
Ang bukas yung parmelita ay tulad din ng isang binhi Na ipinunla sa masaka ng bukirin ng karmelo Naghahangad na maging isang ganap na puno Pinakamatatag na di kayang wasaki Bagyo, sa kanyang lilim at bungay masisyahan kahit sino Ang lumago sa Carmelo ay punong-puno ng patasa Dahil tayo'y nasa malawak at masagana
Oh, no. 